Hi, this is Corey McCarthy, and welcome to a new episode of Fit, Formidable, and Fantastic. That's right, go F yourself, and happy Meatless Monday. I've got a what I think is going to be a great episode in store for you. Um, I had a, it's, it's specifically for vegan men, but the women out there might get something out of this, especially if you um, are close to or care about a, a vegan male that you'd like to um, maybe direct to this video, or at least summarize the details from the video, too. Um, I had been doing some research, and I came across a really interesting uh, study, and that led me to further research to try to bring a comprehensive video to you all, not just of um, a, a particular interesting piece of information, but what you can do. I tried to expand upon that, about things you can do um, to uh, with this knowledge, that is. And that is that, um, uh, let, 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 me just, let me just jump into saying that there are some things that I would advise vegan men to do to ensure um, ample, proper, adequate is a good word, hormone levels. Sorry, it's, it's early, so I'm a little tired here jumping over my words. Um, now, in past videos, I have always stressed to ensure uh, at, you know, um, an ample dietary fat intake um, each day. I never advise people to drop their total fat intake below 20% of your maintenance calories per day, and that's for men or women, uh, and that comes to approximately uh, 0.34 grams per pound of body weight a day. That is a minimum. Um, that's not a maximum. That's a minimum for just proper health. Um, and I know there's a lot of vegan fad diets out there that suggest less, but... Uh, <laughs> You all know what I feel about these these pseudoscientific vegan fad diets, um, so I'm not gonna bother you all with with diving into that rant again. Um, but um, one thing that I would like to note that uh, it is shown that adequate saturated and poly unsaturated fat intake is is what specifically has been shown to ensure optimal testosterone production. Now, this this is gonna um, bring me into something else here. And l let me say that beyond just recommending that vegan males get ample fat intake and um, appropriate saturated and polyunsaturated fat intake, um, not avoiding, but actually getting, um, I would also uh, suggest that uh, you supplement with a good extract of stinging nettles, uh, preferably aqueous, um, or the LJ100 uh, extract of Tomcat Alley, um, which is shown to be most potent, uh, as well as obtaining ample vitamin D levels. Now, why am I suggesting these supplements, you might ask? Uh, again, for vegan men. But why am I suggesting this, you might ask? Well, this brings me to the study that I was reading. Based on a study that was published in the British Journal of Nutrition, while vegan men were found to have only slightly higher total testosterone levels. Yes, vegan men versus omnivorous men are shown to have slightly higher levels of, of total testosterone by 7%, actually. Their SHBG levels, which is known as sex hormone binding globulin, were actually significantly higher as well, by 23%. Um, now, Sex hormone binding globulin, which is known as SHBG, um, basically um, determines the bioavailability of sex hormones. The higher one's SHBG levels, the lower the bioavailability of one's sex hormones, including testosterone. That means that while vegan men have higher total testosterone, because the SHBG levels were higher, it's not as bioavailable as a testosterone in omnivores. Now, this brings me to my previous suggestion, right back to it. That is to consume um, adequate dietary fats per day and not to avoid saturated or polyunsaturated fats. And this will ensure that, you're op that you optimize your testosterone production. But to furthermore, um, given the study uh, on vegan men, consider supplementing with stinging nettles or Tomcat Alley, as I had previously mentioned, um, as these herbs are both shown to lower SHBG levels. 
Um, and furthermore, you would consider either obtaining healthy vitamin D levels from sun exposure or supplementation. And I've done videos, I'm not going to bore you with all that again, I've done videos in the past on how to obtain vegan D3, for instance. Um, there are uh, vegan supplements available and, uh, and ways to get that. So I've, been, I've gone over that before. Um, but optimal uh, vitamin D levels are also shown to lower SHBG in adult males. Now, there is a word of caution here. I would advise before embarking on this to get your SHBG levels checked. Um, the reason why is low SHBG is correlated with heart disease, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. And while SHBG does not appear to be the cause of these ailments, uh, and, and other ailments as well, um, including things like sleep apnea, um, it can be a warning sign that there is something wrong. Uh, so I would so basically what I'm trying to say is, is my suggestion is before attempting to lower your SHBG levels, albeit by a natural means, you might want to see where you stand um, with those levels. Basically, um, really that's all I have to say. So that's why I made the suggestion. So I would ensure optimal fat intake, and I wouldn't avoid saturated fat. And some good sources that would be, for instance, like coconut or coconut oil is a really good source of vegan saturated fat. Um, but at the same time, um, I, I, I also would suggest maybe supplementing with those or at least getting ample vitamin D levels. So uh, quality fat intake and ample vitamin D levels. But if you want to try supplementing with uh, uh, stinging nettles and Tomcat Alley, you can give that a go as well. But I would suggest maybe getting your levels checked because if you have low levels, that might be a sign of a problem. Um, and supplementing might actually throw off that sign. So you might miss the sign, basically, is what I'm trying to say here. So anyway, um, that's really all I have to say about that. If there's anything you'd like to add to this or any questions you have um, or anything you want to discuss, uh, any comments or anything, really, just put them in the comment section below, as usual. Otherwise, I'll see you guys this coming Friday for a regularly scheduled episode. So until then, stay fit, stay formidable, and stay fantastic. I will see you around.